Hello again and welcome to part 2 of the IT Services Guide to GDPR Awareness. In this part of the course, we'll recap on what we did in part one. So if you've not seen that yet, I'd suggest you go back and take a look at part one of our guide to GDPR. We talked about personal data, the concept of it and the definition. So in this section of the course, we're just going to take a look at how that might apply to some examples in real life. What is and what isn't personal data. Let's take a look at some examples of personal data. So. Would each of the following count as personal data, or PII, the American term which is personally identifiable information? First one is nice and clear. James Smith of 2 North Road, London, N12 3HA, well clearly that's identifiable, it identifies Mr Smith. But what about the next one? That bald bloke living on the corner by the post office. Well yes. Think about the definition earlier. We said that it included physical, physiological and genetic information, and location data for that matter. And that's what that bald bloke living on the corner by the post office amounts to. The point of this sentence would be to describe someone. In other words, it's something which directly or indirectly identifies someone. Think of the next one. The managing director of the IT service. Well, the IT service is a company. It has a managing director. If you Google managing director of the IT service, or even just look on the company's house database, you can find out who that person is. So once again, this is information relating to a living person who is identifiable. What about usernames? Username A123456. This could, of course, just as easily be a Twitter handle at that bald bloke. What's the point of a username but to identify a user? It might be that you don't have access to the information about who the user is, so you may not know who at that bald bloke is, but Twitter do. Whoever has access to this system representing username A123456 could tell you who that username is. So yes, this is something which, with other information perhaps, allows you to identify someone. Think of a council publishing a planning application on its portal. We have an application reference here, AB 2018-1234-L. Would that be personal data? Absolutely. If you were to go to the, uh, the planning portal for the council, type in the reference number, you can find out who made that planning application. In fact, in 2017, one of the councils in the UK got into a lot of trouble for publishing information relating to a planning application that included information about disabilities of the children in the family, which was part of the justification for the planning application. Normally, the council would have redacted that information, but on this occasion it slipped through the net, and the council was initially fined £150,000, although it was later reduced to 70000 on appeal. So you can see that that's an example of where this planning application reference number would be definitely personal data. And what about the IP address? Well, as we said, IP addresses are simply online identifiers, and they allow you, or the internet service provider, to identify a person by the device they were using. So yes, IP addresses are also counted as personal data under the GDPR. There are many other definitions provided in Article 4 of the GDPR, but those two key ones, data subject and personal data, are the only ones we need for now. So that's it for this part of the course. In the next section, we'll consider the first of the core principles of the GDPR. Remember, if we can help you, if you'd like us to come and talk to you about GDPR or run training or audits for you and your team, contact us at www.theitservice.co.uk. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next part.